across the street and around the world, welcome to another edition of the Grace Hour. Uh, it's been a great week. Uh, we're excited for today's program. I just want to warn you, uh, next week, the 20th of June to the 24th, there'll be no Grace Hour because it's convention week. But this is the last program for this week, so we have this program. But next week, there's no Grace Hour for the whole week. Um, Remember that, but you can come down to 6025 Moravia Park Drive and take part in our convention. There's going to be all kinds of programs happening here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, into Saturday. We'd love to have you come down and visit us. A lot of the things that are happening also are going to be online. So we look forward to seeing you back on the Grace Hour the following week. So this week, the last day we've been talking all about this week about balance, false balances, having balance. It's amazing how much of our life is unbalanced. Um, and we're always trying to find ways to rebalance, to reset. Uh, we have all these, um, what would we say, these resolutions, these plans to change our life. And the reason why is because things are not in balance. So we're going to continue talking about that today. And in the studio we have with us, Pastor Shabelli, to talk about balance. A false balance or a right balance. That's a it. true balance. That's, by the way, I've never heard of that in the history of my life. That there's no grace hour during convention is that something i never knew that huh last year we didn't have it either we so. didn't no sir where was i here oh, okay all right so it's something that i just forgot about it just can happen a false balance hebrew uh proverbs 11 verse 1 a false balance is an abomination to mm -hmm. the lord mm -hmm. and that's interesting because uh that's a very powerful word abomination mm -hmm. you know and uh I was thinking about false balance. Um, we spoke last night in Carlisle. If somebody's listening, they could call up and say hello to us. And then uh, studying it this morning, and I came up with this idea in, uh, of a false balance. Number one, uh, you have the word of God, but you have no grace. Hmm. Number two, you have grace, but no word. In Acts chapter 20, verse 32, it's a verse that we all have heard many times and we love. Paul is saying goodbye to the leaders of uh, the church of Ephesus. I think there was a number of men there uh, in Acts 20. Somebody said uh, it could have been 20 plus men mm -hmm. that were Ephesian leaders. And from verses 17 through 38, he had what I call one of the greatest leadership uh, teachings in, uh, on ministry that I've ever read in my life. And uh, he spoke to them and he says, uh, and now I commend you to God. And commend means I give you over to God. Mm -hmm. I give you over to God. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. That means they're set apart. Sanctified is to be set apart. What are they set apart to? To the word of grace so they can be built and be given an inheritance participate in their inheritance and these were his last words to this particular ministry mm. uh, in Ephesus and you see in John chapter 1 14 through 18 the emphasis of God's word the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten full of grace and truth mm -hmm. so you can see this combination also in Acts 14 verse 3 a uh, long time giving testimony to the word of his grace you can see the word of God and the grace of God in Second Timothy chapter 1 and 2, you see the emphasis being upon uh, the grace of God. And then chapters 3 and 4 on the, the word of God. And so you can see Paul speaking to Timothy about God's word and God's grace. And really this is who God is. God is his word, John 1, 1. And God is the God of all grace, First Peter 5, 10. And so let's think about a, a, a false a a false balance. Mm -hmm. What is a false balance? Well, a false balance is, uh, the first one I said is, you have God's word, mm -hmm. but no grace, no nature and character of God. So grace is the fullness of all the attributes of God. Grace is his fullness and his glory. It's more than just some favor. Mm -hmm. It really speaks of the 26 attributes of God uh, in the Holy Spirit given to man that he can actually mix faith with and operate in. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you have the word of God without grace, you have what I call uh, incredible legalism. Yes. It can be the letter 
It can be, uh, it's, it's the word, of course, but it lacks the character and nature of God. And you know, the, if you read Matthew chapter 4, the devil used the Bible. So it's not about just using the Bible. The devil quoted the scriptures to Jesus in the temptation in the wilderness. So when you have God's word without God's nature, Mm -hmm. without God's grace, without God's fullness, without God's glory, you end up having something that can really kill people. Mm. It says the letter kills in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 3 through 7, but the spirit gives life. So you've got the word, no grace, there's no life. Mm. There's no life. And what ends up happening is legalism takes place. This is what Jesus faced, which was one of the most uh, difficult enemies for anybody to face, is legalism in the ministry. Mm. When he came, uh, he, he met legalistic people. He met the Pharisees and Sadducees, the scribes, the elders, and there was an incredible amount of legalism that was taking place where people would be trying to live by the letter without the nature and character of God. And let me say this, only the nature and character of God, his grace, can fulfill the word of God. Mm. That's it. So the word without grace, legalism, legalism, and that is so dangerous. The devil is very legalistic. The Mm. world is legalistic. And the old sin nature is legalistic. Mm. There's the legalistic trinity right there. The Mm -hmm. devil, uh, the world, and the old sin nature. So here's the word, and there's no grace. Oh, yeah, you're telling me the truth, you know. You ought to, you ought to do this, you ought to do that, you know. And they, they say it without the nature and character of the spirit. There's no being a partaker of the divine nature. And so you got the word, mm-hmm. and people are telling you to live by this, is what the Bible says, right. and you got to do this, and you got to stop drinking, and you mm-hmm. got to stop, and we, and we understand that drinking and alcohol is wrong and smoking marijuana and going out on your wife and go doing all kinds of strange things that are out there stealing money and operating a business without any ethics mm-hmm. and we tell people about that but we don't give them that word in the nature of god so it doesn't create a capacity for people to respond wow. they can't respond mm-hmm. now you have grace without the word and that's just like liberal being yes. a liberalism, mm-hmm. you know, and it just allows you to live any way you want. You have grace. Oh, it's all grace. Somebody said that to me one time. You know, it's all grace. I, I knocked on a door and a man answered and it was a woman's house. Wow. And he said, oh, Pastor Shabelli, it's, it's all grace. It's all grace. I'm like, huh. <laughs> you have used grace outside of the word of God. There There's is. no definition to your grace. The grace of God is just some kind of thing that's happening in your human soul or through maybe the way the world sees it or some kind of favor that's void of God. So grace without the word uh, becomes an opportunity to really live any way you want, any mm-hmm. lifestyle you want, any way you want. It's great. Oh, it's all grace. Oh, it's all grace. You know, we don't have to evangelize God's, God's all, it's all grace. It's mm-hmm. all grace. We don't have to read our Bible. We don't have to pray. It's all grace. It's all grace. And so you have this false balance that's taking place. Mm-hmm. This is what's going on. So what is life? See, one is the word without grace is letter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Grace without the word is licentious lifestyle, a liberal lifestyle. But when you have the word and grace, you have life. Mm. You have mm. Zoe life. That's the mm. third L, Zoe life. The word of God's grace. And you can see this. You see this all through the Bible. The, uh, the understanding of God's grace and God's word being absolutely one and the same. Mm. We are a partaker of the word and we are a partaker of grace. We are a partaker of the divine nature. And this is, this is how we escape the corruption that's in the world through loss. By the way, with this kind of, uh, with the word without grace, you can't escape corruption. Hmm. Grace without the word, you can't escape the corruption that's in this world through lust. And by the way, people have this idea about lust and what it means. It really means what's on your mind. Mm-hmm. And anything that's on my mind that's contrary to God's mind is lust. Wow. What's upon the mind, epithumia. Okay. what's on the mind you know and so we i want to have god's word and god's grace on my mind okay continuously not just in my mouth not just some christian phraseology not just some theology from a book mm. but a life mm. of god's word and a life of god's grace and, and and that's what produces this spiritual life that can make such a difference in this world today i don't think it can make a difference with just the, the word without god's nature mm. 
I don't think you can make a difference with grace without the word. It just becomes grace that you have manufactured to your own seductive uh, desires and the seducing spirits of the enemy. And it's, re- it's really not going to take us very far at all. Mm. It really becomes this uh, substitute that takes place. So we need God's word. Uh-huh. We need God's grace. That's mm-hmm. what produces life. Mm. And so we have ministries around uh, the world. And I just pray that they would become partakers of God's word and partakers of God's grace. This is what will make a difference in any area. I don't care where it is, Mm -hmm. whether it's America, Canada, Europe, Eastern Europe, Asia, India, China, South America. It's, you know, well, that will work here, but it won't work there. Oh, really? Well, it looks like your brain's not working. Mm -hmm. Basically, Mm -hmm. your brain's not working. This message is the character and nature of God, which is the gospel. Yes. By the way, everything else, if, if it's grace and no word, it's not the gospel. If it's word and no grace, it's not the gospel because the gospel's good news. Mm-hmm. The word of grace is going to help me to grow. I love what Paul said in Colossians chapter one. I think it's verse five and six in there. Uh, I knew you knew the grace of God in truth. Mm-hmm. You knew the grace of God in truth. You knew the grace of God. You knew the truth of God. And because you had this personal, the word no there, he knew the grace of God and truth is something that's a personal knowledge that, that is in that church's life and in that person's life. So as we close the devotional, let's be people. Let's call up today. Let's talk about the word of grace. Let's talk about, uh, maybe you've got an, a, a thought on uh, what happens when I have the Bible, the word, but there's no nature of God. There's no grace. What happens when I've got grace, but there's no definition from the word, no specifics, nothing precise and definite. And maybe we could discuss that. Maybe we can uh, keep the program going on that particular theme. The word of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome, awesome thoughts from Pastor Chabelli. You can reach out to us in North America at 1-800-338-7060. Or you can call us locally at 410-483-3700. And you can also email questions to questions at gracehour.org. We are also live at YouTube and Facebook, but you can also get us on many different podcasts, the Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, wow. Audible, and even Stitcher. You can get us on many of those, and that's just to name a few. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. Um, this is a great topic. All week we've been talking about balance, and I like what Pastor Billy said about the balance of the word and grace. And in our ministry and in life, I'm looking for balance. I'm always buying books, finding ways to try to organize my life because my life is so busy. Um, and a lot of times there isn't a lot of balance. I, w- I want to go back to a word you, you mentioned, Pastor Shabelli, that, that a lot of people, um, that a lot of people really, uh, how can I put this, struggle with liberalism because that <laughs> word can mean a lot of things. So maybe you could liberalism open that up a little bit. Lib- what is liberalism? Because you said, and I'm quote, you said, if I have grace, meaning I'm, I have exposure to the character of God, but there's no word of God. There's no truth. What is liberalism? Then I, de- I define what grace is through my uh, old sin nature. It can be the good side of my old sin nature. Okay. I define what grace is based upon my experiences and my desires. Interesting. What I, what I want. Okay. My experience and my desires, you know. Because the grace of God gives me, you know, the the uh, liberty, liberalism, or liberty to drink, drink alcohol. Oh yeah, so there's oh the yeah, word. Jesus drank wine. Oh really? It wasn't the same thing you're talking about, you know? So, so liberalism is really liberty without restraint. R- liberty without restraint. You would yeah. say kind of like there's no seatbelt in my life. You'll find that the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, shockingly enough, says no to me more than He says yes to me, mm-hmm. because the the flesh has always got a lot of zeal. So the Holy Spirit is constantly saying, that might be right, but that's not righteous. That might be good, but that's not godly. That might be profitable, but that not, I mean, it might be nice, but it might not be profitable. Uh, That might be, uh, I would say it might be good to do, but it might not be wise. It Mm -hmm. might be knowledgeable, not wise, because a lot, I think that penetration, what you said right there, there is a lot of elements or what I would call experiences or expressions of the character of God divorced from the word of God. And uh, well, we, we hear that word oftentimes today uh, in our culture, the word liberal. Yep. You know? It's a huge word. It's yep. a huge word. And, uh, you know, what, what does that actually mean? This really has 
it's their definition of what they might think is liberty, but it's not at all. Mm. It is it is something that uh, they desire to do that's contrary to the truth oftentimes, you know? And um, think about this, uh, and that this word, First uh, Timothy 4, 1, mm -hmm. in the last days there'll be seducing spirits and doctrines that devils teach. And then in the last days, Second Timothy 3, 1, there are dangerous times. Mm -hmm. The word perilous is chalepo, so it means demonically dangerous. So what is the enemy's objective? Mm -hmm. And we see it played out in religion. Mm -hmm. We see it played out in people's lives, and it can happen to anybody at any time. Well, he would love you to have, oh yeah, have the Bible without God's nature. Right. That way you can walk around killing yourself and other people. Right. Then have God's nature without truth, and you have no direction in life. You're just out there. You are you're saved, but uh, you're not living by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, Matthew 4, 4. So what, what is your life? There's no definition to your life. So this is interesting. You got the word, you mm -hmm. might have some definition, but you how to perform that which is good, I find not. Uh, then you got, so you got, you got a false balance. You, what, what, what is a true balance? The word of grace right. is a true balance that produces life. So the opposite of true is false. So a false balance is anything that's opposed to truth. And it's like, Oh, I've got I've got grace, but without the word, or I've got the word without grace. That's a false balance, and some sometimes the churches can actually yeah. literally propagate false balances. But there's this big, big push, Pastor Chavelli. There's this big push in the world, and it's in the church now, where people are expanding liberty. Um, <laughs> you're yeah. restricting me. You're stopping me. Don't judge sure. me. And it's this big libertarian thought that okay, uh, I, I give me the freedom. They they confuse yeah. the word liberty and freedom. And when I when you give someone more liberty, that's called progress. <laughs> We're progressing as yeah. a country because people have more liberty. We're progressing as a church because we give people in our church more liberty. So, so th I would like to look these two words yeah. together: liberty and freedom. Well, I think also, too, that uh, Galatians said uh, not to use your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Thank you. Of sin. So liberty and freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, freedom, the word eleutheria, mm -hmm. it really means, uh, in other words, I am, I am set free right. from the world, the flesh, and the devil. It's, it's really a spiritual freedom that takes place. Now, there is the physical freedoms that we see that people have such a desire for, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that, but... Uh, liberty and freedom and uh, it's not freedom to live according to the flesh it's, it's not it's not freedom to do what I want to do in life and by the way you can you have a you have a, a free volition mm -hmm. you want to choose to sin you can sin yep you want to choose to walk with God you can walk with God that's just it's, so you do have the freedom of a will given to you by God allowed by God for me to take place but think about what could happen you know Somebody uh, says that, uh, you know, we should, we should, there should be no law against using narcotics. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. And then, okay. And by the way, that's out there. Oh yeah. That's out there. It's out there. And, and a lot and, of Christians want that. And so if there's no, if there's, if you can use narcotics and there's no uh, penalty for it, there's nothing mm -hmm. uh, that's going to take place if you do do that. And then you infringe upon other people's liberties because when you're under the influence of narcotics, you're going to do some things that, uh, are going to really go against somebody else's liberty. Oh, I don't care. I, uh, I got liberty to get high and I can do, I can do this and I can do that yeah. and whatnot. So it's using that so-called liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And that's, that's dangerous business. So demons, mm -hmm. this is what they want. This is what demonic forces are trying to do. Mm -hmm. They're seducing spirits, right. planeo spirits and doctrines of devils. Uh -huh. Can you imagine? Paul is warning Timothy, about this in right. the last days. And he says the same thing in 2 Timothy 3, 1. So we see, the, we see more and more the emphasis. And then people saying, well, yes, we emphasize, yeah, we believe the Bible. Well, not, not a whole lot of people anymore believe the Bible, but we believe the Bible, but oh, don't, that's this nature of God thing, you know, or we, we believe in the mm -hmm. God is love. And if God is love, we can live like the old hippies, you right, know? Right. We're just hanging around, nobody's gotta get married. 
Free sex movement, smoking dope every day, using drugs. But you know, we're free. Living in tents. We're free. Come, come on, on now. Free. You're free. free. You are in such bondage. You know what? You can. You might be free in some aspect that you think you're free, but you are in tremendous bondage to your flesh. Let's go back yeah. to the verse you quoted. I love the verse. Let's go back to that because what you're talking about, you're saying that it's such a thing as unbalanced liberty. Sure. That, all right, so Galatians 1.13, you said, that's the verse you quoted where you it said- It was 5.13? Yeah, you don't use your liberty as an occasion of the flesh. To the flesh, right. I would say in verse 1, he says you have liberty Yeah. in verse 1. So verse 1 is about progress. I now have liberty. I can make progress, but my progress has boundaries. In verse 13, my mm-hmm. progress has purpose to it. I'm not just going forward. I don't want to be free just to be free. I want to have purpose to my progress. Like we're making progress. I mean, there's been so much talk about <laughs> progressive liberty. Well, yeah, we, 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 we made progress so women can do more things. We made progress so races can do more things. There's more progress. But if there's no purpose in the progress, where are we going? Mm-hmm. Where are we going? You know, some people have granted liberty to people that weren't ready for it. Wow, and they they ended up they ended up just as, I'm talking about in the natural, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. maybe in certain nations and certain places, mm-hmm. and people were just not ready for it. They hadn't been really instructed or trained in in what liberty is all about. Sure. Training is all about. We have anybody out there? I mean, uh, you can call us up, you know, from Carlisle, from uh, New York, from New Orleans, Pastor Donnie Brown, from Europe. I'd also say this to Pastor Bella. You made a great point. Uh, uh, Progress has to have purpose and it has to have direction or progress is out of balance. Yeah. It's a car without a steering wheel, right? <laughs> and, and you've got to really yeah. make sure that when I connect some, and this is a good word for Christians as far as a false balance, make sure when you align yourself with an organization or a movement of any kind, where is it going? You need to ask the question. The cause may be right, right but the progress may be wrong. The direction may be wrong. And I like what you said earlier about the truth. When you, when you, when you have the truth, truth gives me direction to my liberty. Mm-hmm. Truth gives me to direction. So in the character of God, I've got the grace. I've got, in the grace of God, I've got the patience of God. I've got the long-suffering of God. But the long-suffering is according to truth. The patience is according to truth. And uh, what that does is that sets me free. So I can be patient knowing that my patience is being revealed, is being guided by the truth. What uh, John 8, 36 and 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And if the sun sets you free, then you're free indeed because of the direction. Isn't that what, what do they say right after that? We're not in bondage. Yeah. That's yeah. what they said. We've got some initiations on, uh, I don't know what you call all these devices here. Uh, but. Yep. We got... Uh, <laughs> We've got uh, Ron Williams speaking. He says, good afternoon, pastors, watching from my limo in New York City. It's convention time. See you Monday. Can't wait wow. to see you. Uh, also, uh, Mary Schoenberger asked about expounding on the truth that sets us free. We just did that. Uh, Doreen Kimball says, Pastor Billy, thanks for the grace message. Wow. Uh, Carol Bailey says, great truth, Pastor Billy. I love it. Word of life with the life of the word with grace. Great. Those are some uh, of the comments Doreen, we've so far. I haven't seen you in a long time. From social media, <laughs> uh, is Mean Castle from El Salvador is learning, she says. That's so good. El Salvador, great. El Salvador. Yes, it's awesome. Uh, anybody from Africa can initiate to us? Come on now. We both have spent many, many years in Africa. I just, and, I like this thought about All balance. three of us yeah, right here. That's true. It's an African Grace Hour. <laughs> Whoa! Well, easy now. <laughs> you can call us if you're if you if you're near a phone. We would like to hear from you by email. Call us Sell. in North America. You can call us at one 338 7060 or you can call us locally at 410-483-3700. Uh, you can also reach out to us through YouTube or Facebook or email us at questions at gracehour.org. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, let me ask you a question before we move on. You mentioned something that I really liked. Uh, when you talked about the way that the Word of God and the grace of God work together, can you expound more on how they work together in my life to bring balance to my life? Well, they actually are one, right? He's, he's is the Word, right? and he is, the, out of his fullness we have received, grace upon grace. He is the Word, okay. and he is grace. So... They actually are one, and they are one in the nature. This is the nature and character of God. So uh, there's all kinds of initiations by 
uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil mm -hmm. to get us to operate outside of God's word or to change God's word or to kind of like, you know, tone it down a bit or mm -hmm. whatever it may mm -hmm. be. And then there are many churches out there that have absolutely no understanding of God's nature and character. And so it's, it, it's, a, it's a false word without grace and it's a false grace without the word. Mm -hmm. That's what you have. It's, it, it's, a, it's this balance. How about something like this too? You have a gift from mm -hmm. God, okay, all right, but you don't, uh, you don't care about the Bible. That's a false balance in one aspect. Wow. You know, you got a gift from God. Maybe it's it could be a a, a preaching gift. It could be any one of the sixteen gifts mm -hmm. that God gives in in the Scriptures. But you have no grace. Uh, uh, you have no word, or you have God's word, but you never operate in your grace given gift. Mm. It's a false balance, and this is uh, this is what you can see taking place. And how, how about I'm a born again Christian, but I don't go to church. That's a false balance, isn't it? I'm, yes. I'm saved, yeah. but I don't need church. You know, uh, I, I, God saved me. I'm going to heaven. I don't need church. You have no balance. Then your Christianity in one aspect, people don't like to hear this. It's an abomination. It really is. It's not, it's not correct. It's like the, the, Jesus is the head of the church. So I'm born again, but I don't think church is important. Okay. Or I go to church, but I think being born again is not important. You know, mm -hmm. really, it's a mm -hmm. fall. It's a false balance. And do we have a caller? No, we don't. Oh, I thought I saw somebody oh, up there. I, we don't. So, having said that, my question to you is this: If you, if it, it, it's, it's interesting that he uses the word abomination. It literally means something unclean and offensive to God. Yeah, right. So when when my life is spiritually unbalanced, my experience. Is offensive to God my mm -hmm. experience and though I may go to church he's saying it, it says it's a false balance which means, and he says it like it's possible that say pastor Billy, that for instance I'm a believer and I can sense something's out of whack something's out of balance How, what can I do to get back in balance with God I sense something is out of balance mm -hmm. well here you have two you have the two options to be a receiver of Receive with meekness the implanted and grafted word which can deliver your soul. Okay. I become a receiver of the word. That's great. Okay. I, and, and maybe I, I sense it in, in maybe not totally, but in some areas. Mm -hmm. So I go to the Bible like, and I, and I get God's thoughts and God's mind. I get doctrine on that specific area. I believe there's not a sin, a habit, uh, or something that's going on in somebody's life that cannot be uh, literally uh, have deliverance through the word of God mm -hmm. uh, because repentance is changing your thinking and all you have to do is change your thinking it's not mm -hmm. a bad word some people take that word sometimes and they it's like they, they don't like that word repentance you know and they, they think of John the Baptist screaming and yelling or something you know they think correction yeah. like you're yeah. gonna hammer yeah. me yeah. yeah like like they were hammered by their teacher B uh, trying to burn yeah. Like, yeah. oh my god yeah. repent yeah, yeah. But it means just change your thinking so there's an area in, in a person's life that maybe I uh, first of all, the Holy Spirit is going to minister to me mm -hmm. and he's going to convince me of that first okay. and foremost. Then when the Holy Spirit convinces me, he's not going to leave me to myself. So I just am, okay, I know that, but what do I do? He's going to give me absolutely the the right way of, of having a solution, mm -hmm. a correction, a uh, deliverance from that. So it's through God's word. Okay. And then I've got to have the grace of God and his nature to perform his word. Mm -hmm. This is important. So uh, I sense something and, and it can be something in a person's life. Maybe a person struggles in prayer. Okay. So what would I do if I was struggling in prayer? And if I struggle in prayer, I'm going to find every verse I can on prayer in the Bible. Beautiful. Then I'm going to ask the Holy spirit to put that in my heart. And it's like, you know, receiving that, that's the grace of God. Receiving God's thoughts, God's mind, God's power to overcome that area. Mm -hmm. It will take the word and the nature of God to okay. overcome that area, to be delivered in that area. I don't care what addiction it is, what problem it is, what's going on in a marriage or relationship, that if I receive God's mind mm -hmm. and God's nature and God's spiritual power, that I will absolutely experience victory. That's if crazy. if I don't, if I just take in the word and then I get all condemned because I can't perform it, how to perform that which is good I find not, Paul said, Romans seven. So I've got I've got the performance factor living in me, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And by the way, isn't it grace that God would give you Himself? 
Yeah. Give yeah. you the person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So whatever area it might be that you have, you find yourself in. So uh, maybe uh, I'm not, I'm not giving the way I should in the, in, in my local church. Okay. Go to the Bible, study tithing, study giving, study the heart of God, and then mix faith with what you're studying right. and then allow the, and ask the Holy Spirit to perform that. That's key. Let me, let me sit in for a second because we have a quick, uh, 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 Doreen has asked me a question online about this. Let me get these comments first. Pastor Alfred from Liberia, we're all here. God bless you. And Tess from Florida says, uh, see you in convention, pastors. Glad to know our past. Toll is there. Pastor Michael Toll is there too. Please pray for my trip this Sunday. Thanks in regards for Malmo, Sweden. But Doreen asked this question. So then grace is mixed with all situations. Grace is mixed with the situations. Grace Grace is something we receive, so uh, okay. it's the grace of God, and we have the Holy Spirit living in us, so I can receive grace, okay? Uh, well, what happens if I, uh, grace with all situations, I don't know how I would define that, but... I think she uh, means we can apply it, or we can In every use situation, it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, okay. I think that's what Absolutely, she's God has an answer for every, every situation, every direction, every wrong step, uh, every challenge, every mm -hmm. task, every temptation, uh, every trial, whatever's going on, grace and the word will, will give us exactly what we need. And so there's there's no temptation, First uh, Corinthians 10, 13, that comes upon a man or is given to man, that God is not able to provide us a way of escape. Right. The way of escape is God's grace and God's word. That's it. So way of escape, you know. Uh, and Paul made many escapes physically, but he also we have a way of escape spiritually speaking. No matter what the situation is, you can't think that, by the way, God is not going to allow you to go into something without giving you the provision to be delivered from it. Yeah. That word abomination, coming back to that word <laughs> abomination, it's a strong word. In fact, it is. Solomon uses it again in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. He says, six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. I and think, he, yeah. He mentions a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans. <clears throat> Feet that are swift to running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies. Notice he mentions a lying tongue twice. Mm -hmm. And he also <laughs> mentions one who sows discord among the brethren. Then five chapters later, he says, oh, and by the way, a false weight is also an abomination to me. It's amazing the things yeah. that are offensive to God. I heard Pastor Stevens preach on that one time. And he said, uh, he mentions the six, but he says this, he said that only the seventh was an abomination. Oh, interesting. Yeah, sowing discord among brethren. That's what he said. So in, so in division, his application. So division and, <clears throat> and, and division is as much an, an, un, an unbalanced weight or an offense to sure. God. And, and that makes sense because if I'm in the body of Christ and I'm divided from the body of Christ, I'm not balanced. I'm not connected experientially mm -hmm. in fellowship with the body of Christ. Uh, I love the way that this theme has been developed throughout the week because the reality is many people, because of COVID and changes in their life, their life is completely changed, is completely out of whack. I've, I've seen that to be true. Yeah. And as I talk to different pastors and people around the world, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily every place. Like okay. it's not, it hasn't had that much of an effect in Africa. Well, I'm thinking more in terms <clears throat> of the first world, in yeah. Europe, America. I mean, people that normally had this nice little rhythm in their life. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. It stopped them. It's all gone. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. And they don't know how to handle it. And they need to, well, they need to just continue in the things that you've learned, Second Timothy mm -hmm. 3, 14, you know. And they've got to go back and start right there and say, like, I'm, you know, I was doing, I was coming to church three times a week. I'm not going to let this idea of COVID be something that is uh, in my mind as a persuasive element to get me away from the things that God has persuaded me to do. Mm. And this is, the, this is important because all of a sudden, uh, I don't want to shake anybody's hand. All of a sudden, he sneezed, get off the bus, you know, <laughs> and, and, and whatnot. He's got, who knows what he's got, you know? And I, I think having uh, been reared up and worked for, I don't know how many decades in Africa, well, 40, 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. Uh, disease it's like it is to me it's not such a big thing well let, let, let's 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 play both sides of the fashion belly there seems to be on the one hand of a lot of people that are overreacting mm -hmm. as far as the fear and they feed it and they, they're scared to leave their bathroom but then <laughs> there's there's a certain amount of concern among believers about getting sick so what's the right balance for the concern as a, I mean, it's a different word not fear what's the right balance of concern 
trust and obey. Well, there's no other way. Okay. I mean, really, faith in God? Yeah. I mean, isn't that the answer to everything? I'm going to trust God. And like Job said, though he slay me, I will trust him. I mean, every time you get in a car, you can be dead. Yeah. Right? You get in an accident, but the maybe, car blows up, something happens, you know? And I would also push to that. I would say maybe I have to really be led by God, and then I have to walk in. And, and, and two things. I have to be led by God, and then I can't indict someone on the right, basis right, of where right. they are, right? Romans 14, uh, yeah. Romans 14, 4 and 5. They're weak in the faith or they're weak. And, and like, let every man be persuaded in there his own is. mind. Yes. That's the key. You know, I mean, if I was to listen to everybody, like, which mosquito? I mean, all those, you got to get malaria. Yeah. Like, yeah. I start looking at every mosquito that comes near me, you know? But I spell it, congregations are yeah. divided. And I would say the big word that I would think is insensitivity. Um mm -hmm. I, I feel a certain way about COVID, or I feel a certain way, and, and I feel because you don't feel the way I feel mm -hmm. that you're a lesser believer than I am. And oh. I, I that can't be the goal of the body. That can't be. Then you see fellowship broken. Families are divided because of, because not so much because someone thinks differently than I do, but I marginalize them because they feel that way. And, that's, and not, yeah, that's, that's imbalance, right? That's, that's a, a false balance. I, thank you. That's a false balance. Um, the big thing I think also too is the believers are asking the question, okay, pastor, how do I find that? How do I navigate this current situation with balance? How do I navigate? It? And you said it, I have to get back to my word. I have to hear what God is saying to me, mm -hmm. the boundaries. I have liberty, but my liberty is guided by the word of God and motivated by the grace of God. I've got these boundaries and that's how I move through life because without that, I'm going to be adrift. Situations. Okay, he's what is he beautiful for situation? Yes. Yeah, I think that's key that you have fellowship with God because there are going to be very uh, a multitude, very many different situations that happen in our lives over the course of many years, mm. and we've got to just we've got to walk with God. Mm. You know, we got to walk with God. Whether I'm uh, I'm in Genesis chapter twelve, I come out of the earth of the Chaldeas, mm -hmm. or uh, we're ninety nine years old mm -hmm. and uh, walk before me and be perfect. Uh, we have to meet God in every situation because he is beautiful. Actually, it says beautiful for elevation yes. in the situation. So we, we walk with God and that's the only way. That's the only way because God is able to take us into any valley, into any situation, into any test, trial or trouble that's going on. And he meets us in that place. He met the Hebrew boys in the furnace. He didn't take them out of it. Yes. You know, so we're always trying to jump out of them difficult things beautiful and that's, that's not what god is always saying we, we, we're still waiting for your phone calls you can join us at 1-800-338-7060 in north america or locally at 410-483-3700 call us we'd love to talk to you you can email us questions at gracehour.org and i believe we have a phone call uh kathy ryan who do you know i don't okay, know we I, lost her okay should we lost kathy her? call back wherever you are we miss you, you you must be driving in your car with your hand on your phone when you should be having both hands on the wheel no, well, I'm, only I'm only joking kathy. that would be a false balance <laughs> <laughs> both hands on the wheel kathy but jeremiah 14 10 is an interesting verse we are prone to wander and maybe covid maybe this whole thing you've learned that you've drifted off the path because, you know, when you're going the wrong way, you can go the wrong way a long time, a long time, and you're not even paying attention. And then your spiritual GPS doesn't always bring you back because maybe you're not locked in. So you start to drift and drift and drift. And then COVID happens and you realize, I'm not as close to God as I thought I was. I'm not. You just find out that I'm off my track. Yeah, it can be like, okay, so it's, it's, it's COVID uh, today and there's something else tomorrow. Sure. You know? It's something else that's going on tomorrow. It's like, you know, my God, you know, like there's a there's a meteor that's going to hit the earth, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, or it's, what was that thing about the year 2000? Oh, uh, yeah, that was the end of the, the computers it, it, it reset. was all over oh, computers. Oh, my gosh. And the world was going to end. You yeah, know, it's yeah. always going to be, and you notice that in your personal life, you'll get through one thing and then something else comes. Right. I mean, it doesn't, it, it, it never, it doesn't stop until you go home to be with the Lord because you're in a world that is, totally contrary alien from and in opposition to the life of god you you and i have an old sin nature and the devil and demons are here right. so we've got to be constantly uh receiving from god mm. this is the key we talked about it uh today in india about i wasn't there on a zoom 
but uh, really being a uh, person that can take courage, hmm. be a partaker, a taker from God, and constantly taking. I mean, we're always taking because are you breathing right now? Yeah. You're taking in air, otherwise you're not going to make it. Mm. You know, with being a taker, being a taker, and take the word, take mm -hmm. grace, mm -hmm. and don't just take grace and never read the Bible. Don't just read the Bible and never, you know, be in touch with the nature of God and the Holy Spirit's initiation. But a uh, a perfect balance is going to take God's word and God's grace, and it's going to be something that causes my life to have uh, fruit and an effect. You said we had a call. What happened? We lost uh, it again. We lost it again. But well, no. No call back. But, as, but the thing is this, okay, we'll take it now. Finally, they must be going through a tunnel. Oh, I, Kathy, you on the Grace Hour. You're in the tunnel? Hello? <laughs> okay, Kathy, try again. We're going to keep trying. We're still on the air, and you're still trying. <laughs> but I, I was thinking of this. Okay, I need to take courage to realize my life is out of balance. And I need to take courage to get back in balance. Absolutely. In both cases, I've got to step into both. And it's, it takes, a, it's, I think, let me ask you this question. What does it take more courage to do? To see that you're out of balance or that you're in balance? <laughs> or to get back in? Which one is harder, would you say? Uh, I think they both kind of go together in one aspect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but let me say this. Remember, taking courage doesn't mean producing your own courage. Okay. The word take means you've received it. Mm -hmm. You take God's courage. Like, did Paul have courage or did he have the courage of Jesus Christ? You know, mm. see, Jesus Christ is the the perfect, perfect God, perfect man with the perfect courage. Mm. And we look at his life as an example of courage. I'm taking courage. Right. It means I'm receiving the courage of the Holy Spirit, receiving the courage of God. These men that would face situations, men and women like Ruth or Rahab or uh, the mighty men or Joshua and Caleb, or Moses, or Paul, or Peter, they, they took from God. Mm. They, they would receive from God like you would receive anything else. You receive the divine nature, and that divine nature is courage. And maybe that is the greatest imbalance in my life, that I, I'm not, I'm, I've been, I've been, what you just said, I've been trying to do this on my own, mm -hmm. and that's the greatest imbalance, and and that's a, an abomination to God. So when I'm trying to do do this Christian thing in my own strength, in my own ability, it's an abomination to God. That's why it says, "Take the armor of God four or five times." Yeah, you, yeah. you take it. You yeah. take it. Yeah, you don't produce it, or mm -hmm. you don't think I'm going to just pull up my bootstraps and like mm -hmm. you know make it in life. You're, it, it's it's constantly being a receiver, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this is key. Do we get somebody back on the line or no? We're, we're working on Pastor Albert right now. <laughs> Pastor Albert. Okay. Is he? Are we ready for him? Okay, is Pastor Albert, you're on the Grace Hour. Is he Hi, ready sir. For us. Hey. hey so. Go ahead, sir. Hey, the reason nobody calls from. Uh, when the two of you are on. I think you got your phone. I think you got your radio on and the phone operating at the same time. That's why it's cutting out. <clears throat> uh, you got Crumbles my world to show me, hey, you forgot me. I mean, you got all your vacation plans. You've got your job. You got all this stuff organized. You got your little routines. I do this. I do that. I do this. I go here. I've got that. My whole life is organized. And God says, you've organized me out of your life. So I'm going to mm -hmm. destroy everything. And at the end of it, you realize it's still me. <laughs> because all of it's offensive to me. What did he tell the church in Revelation 2, 4? I have somewhat against you. Mm -hmm. To be offensive to God. I have somewhat against you because you're trying to do it yourself. Well, this is the big problem in Christianity. That's the false balance. I'm born again. I'm saved. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not well taught and I'm not in a church where I'm learning the word of God and fellowship in the body of Christ, then I'm trying. I'm, I'm performing mm. through uh, the I, the me, 27 times in Romans chapter 7. He uses the word I. Every time I find mm -hmm. I don't want to do this, yes. I find evil present with me. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the false balance is, I know what God's will is, but I'm trying to do it wow. rather than letting God do it. I think the only person who can uh, obey the Bible is the one who wrote it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's called the Holy Spirit. And he's given to us and we're a new person in Christ. So the false balance is trying to do 
what God says through the energy of my own flesh. And he calls it an abomination. Yeah, it's it is. unclean. It's kind of like when, when the, in, the, in the camp in, in the tabernacle, when something was done in Israel that was unclean, it was taken outside the camp. So everything I do in the flesh, God takes outside of fellowship. Uh -huh. God moves it outside. He said, I can't fellowship with that. He takes it out of fellowship. It's, a, it's like Isaiah 64, 6. It says, filthy rags. My works is, is outside the camp. It's taken outside mm -hmm. the camp. Mm -hmm. So the greatest, the greatest, it's, it's like it's a powerful, it's not like God, you're trying, to, you're trying to do Christianity on your own, and God just sits back and says, that's nice. No, it says here, mm -hmm. through that false balance, it's an abomination to God. Yeah, if you give your body to be burned, it profits you nothing. Yeah. So you did, you, you did that without God. Mm. And... It's like a, it's a false balance. It's like, okay, a balance would be simply receiving what God says mm -hmm. and then allowing God to do it to the uh, person of the Holy Spirit in you. That's that's a perfect balance. That's how that's I get a it true back. Balance. So if but, I'm drifting, yeah. if I'm drifting and I'm prone to drift in Jeremiah 14, 10, and I get out of sync and I know I get out of sync, or the Holy Spirit, like you said, shows me that I'm out of sync, the way I get back is, I get back to the position of being a receiver, mm -hmm. and then I get back to responding to what I received and let God make that happen in my life. That's a great. Yeah. That's a great. That's a great prescription for when I know I'm out of balance. Because you can hear a program like this or all this week and say, you know, Pastor, yeah. I'm kind of feeling out of balance. I'm like my study life, my prayer life. I'm kind of. How do I get back? Is it is it like a works plan? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna try harder and pray longer, <laughs> or I'm gonna make I'm gonna do it. Receive. I yes. Be a receiver. There it is. Like, remember this one we had, we said this years ago, you got the word without the spirit and you dry up. Wow. You got the spirit without the word and you blow up. <laughs> <laughs> you got the word and the spirit and you grow up. Hey, say that again yeah. slowly. That was good. You got, the, you got the word without the spirit and you dry up. Pause right spirit. there. You dry, dry up. You dry okay. up. Okay. So it's like, it's a dry Christianity. You got the spirit without the word and you blow up it's hyper spiritual there it is emotional all over the floor and then Keep you going. got the word and the spirit and you grow up there it is you grow that's the goal we'd hey love to, it's we'd the love, goal we'd love to hear from you call us in north america at 1-800-338-7060 or you can call us locally at 410-483-3700 also email us questions at grace there's quietness today you can continue to reach out to us through youtube and facebook some of you have already reached out to us through social media um Bobby Calaman says, take courage, take God's courage. Yes. Uh, uh, Hannah Pinkova said, replying to Tess Flores, welcome to US, which you could be, I could be at convention. Diana T says, yes. Uh, Doreen, convention. Doreen Kimball says, this is the greatest message from both of you pastors that I've ever heard in years. It really touched every issue a person could have in life in a nutshell. Thank you, Jesus. R.G. Campbell is watching in Las Vegas. See you at convention next week. Wow, R.G. Campbell. 6025 Arabia Park Drive. Come on down to convention next week. And actually, convention has already started. You're going to find a convention in progress. Come on down. We'd love to see we you. We have class tonight, too. There is class. What time is class tonight? I, I think it's at 6, six to 8 or 6.30 to 8. I don't even know. Let's try 6 to try 8. Try 6 to 8. 6 to 8. Let's see what goes on. Come on down. And, uh, yes, it's it's uh, called Grace and the Finished Work. Tonight, we're specifically talking about the Word and Grace. It's 6.30. 6.30, the it's, Word and Grace. And tonight is part two of Grace Hour tonight, the Word yeah. in Grace. Do you yeah. feel out of balance? Do you yeah. sense that something's not right? Make yourself a receiver. Instead of being a corrector, be a receiver. And as you receive, let what you receive correct you. That's, that's really the heart of correction, that mm -hmm. what you receive correct you. Don't be a do-it-yourself corrector. We're not built for that because how would you know what's wrong anyway? You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in. He's the one that puts on the armor. Notice this. In Ephesians chapter 6, it speaks about the armor of God. In Ephesians chapter 5, it speaks about the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.18, you take on, you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, so then the Holy Spirit you put on in Ephesians chapter 6 puts on the armor. You don't bypass the Holy Spirit and put on the armor. You don't bypass the Holy Spirit to correct yourself, but you become a receiver of the grace of God, a receiver of the Word of God. And this is what's amazing. There are things in your life that are out of balance that you don't even know, 
But when you become a receiver, God doesn't just fix what's wrong. God fixes everything. He takes care of everything. Well, that can be that definitely there can be situations in people's lives that yeah. And this is how gracious God is and how mm. patient He is. Mm. It's things that are not correct and you don't even know it. Mm. And God doesn't even, uh, you know, I have much to say to you that you can't grasp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sixteen eight of John. Yes, you, you couldn't handle it if I said it. Yeah. Imagine if 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 some of the things that we know now, thirty forty years later, were said to us the first day we got mm. saved. We turn around and run away. We'd have turned around and run away if God said to you, you're going to go to Africa. You know, you're going to spend like 20, 30 years in Africa, and this is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we, do, we, have been, we, we could have maybe outrun God, maybe. I don't know. Not really. <laughs> we can't outrun God. But we, we would have said, like, I'm out of here. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I remember the first uh, Bible study that I think, Doreen, you came to. It was at my house at 47 Charter Oak Drive. Uh, Agawam, Massachusetts, Good Feeding Lord. Hills, you Massachusetts. Remember that address? I remember the address. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I, I remember. Uh, I wonder if, if you can remember the message that first night. All right, Doreen, you you're on the spot. You've been what, challenged. What was that message? What was that message that you're night? on the clock? <clears throat> I like what he said. This is a good thought. As we're, as we're coming to the end of the program, this is a good thought. You hear this program and you discern something's out of balance, and you're scared because it's not changing. Maybe the reason why you're unbalanced in that area is because God is leaving you there because of capacity. So it's, it, there's not going to be a fix. Okay, I, I, got, I, I wish I could pray more. I'm not balanced in my prayer life. And maybe because of capacity, God says, I know you're not balanced. It's not like in every area of your life you're going to be balanced with God. There's going to be some areas where you're not so balanced, but you're growing in balance. You know? Yeah, look at, look at like, let's, let's, all, let's think about this too. Um, I don't know if we have any calls or not. We do. Let's take it right now. Uh, David Norwood, perhaps. I know him in from In South Maine. Bristol, Maine. South Bristol. Where's Hello that? There. Hey, David, Where's how that? are you? <laughs> I'm doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Great, great to hear from you. Well, uh, I took uh, some of my grandkids and, and their mother out in the boat for a little fishing trip last night. And uh, beautiful sunset beautiful children and uh, my daughter and uh, and I said uh, I know heaven's going to be really really wonderful but I thank God that he let me live on this earth and I guess that's a balance uh, God never said the earth was evil he said the world was evil and the things people do but it sure has been uh, great to see the children and and the sun sets, and uh, to listen to you guys every day. So uh, just wanted to thank you. God Amen. bless you, David. Thank you so much. I like how you said that, that when I'm walking with God, there can be balance in my time. You know, sometimes we're so heavenly oriented that we're not earthly good. But in my time, in my situation, God can give me glimpses of glory that are personal for me, and they bring in the balance of what God is doing in our life. That's awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, Kathy Ryan just wrote in on social media, listening with great liberty at poolside. Yeah, I bet you do have liberty at the poolside. <laughs> so come support the Children of Grace booth and African Missions during convention. There's fast food and the best chefs around. The best chefs around. Wow. Yes. I think my wife's in that booth. That's why they're the best chefs <laughs> around. <laughs> Children of Grace booth. The booths are open soon. I think they're going to be open this weekend. But anyway... Come by and support Children of Grace. Help support orphans around the world this week at convention. Doreen Kimball says it was totally a grace message that you preached. She didn't give me the title. Oh, she yeah, said yeah. it was a grace message. Well, she's generalizing there. It's okay, Doreen. <laughs> a message that gave <laughs> I us. I understand. The, but I like what she said. And this is interesting. She said a message gives us that gave us the capacity to hear God's word. That's it. Yeah, when that's I what take cases. in grace. It produces a capacity to receive the word. So if something's wrong, I take in grace, and then I've got capacity to receive correction or instruction in whatever God has for me. And here's the thing that we want to kind of like begin to close out the program with. You know what a false balance is? You're saved, but you don't go to church. Mm. Or you go to church and you're not saved. I want to use the first one. Okay. You're saved and you don't go to church because maybe... Uh, maybe where you went, I think I stayed away from church for quite a while because mm-hmm. my first experience 
with church wasn't good. Yeah. You know, and false balances, you know, people that are born again, washed in the blood, saved forever, and they have no church, and they do not go to church. That's why we're inviting you to 6025 Moravia Park Drive mm -hmm. and come to church, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, 6.30 on Sunday night, and then our convention. Really, I, you know, and some people will maybe not like this thought, but a false balance is when I'm born again and I do not go to church. I think I don't need church. I've had bad experiences with church. I have wounds from church. Things have happened, and I'm not saying that things did not happen. But you know what? If you eat a bad meal, don't you keep eating? You go to a restaurant, you eat a bad meal. Just don't go to that restaurant again. You know, find another restaurant with a good meal, you know, but not. So really, I think this is so important because across America today and across the world, there are so many people. If you were to take a survey that just are saved, yes, they don't go to church. There is a movement. There's, there's a movement. There that, is a yeah. movement right now <clears throat> for people to do church in their house. Yeah. And not even so much look online at a service, but to just have a homes family study I've, do, I've knocked on doors and met because they have decided that they don't need to assemble. Hebrews 10, 25 says, do not forsake, do not forsake, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, but do it the more as the day approaches. But the world has convinced Christians that everything you can find in church is at home. But in, Wrong. in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23, the fullness of God is found in his church. His assembled church, not in my house. Would you like to say this too? Hello. Every single epistle, or just the majority of epistles, were written to churches. Yes. Isn't that interesting, huh? Yeah. Ephesians, Rome was a church. Ephesians was a church. Colossae was a church. Philippians was a church. Thessalonians was a church. Yep. Come on. I mean, how can you look at that and say, I don't need the church? No, just keep searching. Well, you Just said keep it right. searching. You said it right. You <clears throat> said that people take past experiences or present mm -hmm. hurts and define the kingdom of God. Wow, that's it. The great star, the music, a great show. We'll see you in a week, not next week. From the tw from the twentieth to the twenty fourth, there's no great star, but we'll be back that Monday. Until then, we'll see you soon. God bless you.